Hey everybody, I am Ryan Muncie, your host of the House of Strength podcast. And today we have a very special guest, a friend of mine, Dan. He goes by the name Chef Dan. Um, Dan is a really, really cool guy and he's got a really cool story for everybody today. Um, as a former, um, you're a former personal chef, right Dan? Yes. Okay, so um, as a former personal chef, Dan has lost uh, lost on his weight loss journey, lost over 60 pounds in 11 months. Um, and he has tremendous insight into the number one obstacle that so many people face as a gym owner, as a strength coach, nutrition, you know, guidance counselor. Um, the number one obstacle that I hear is people don't know what to eat. They don't know how to cook it. Grocery shopping is an issue. Um, Dan's going to walk us through step by step some of the tips that he used to personally accomplish that weight loss uh, goal as well as things that he uses as a food, you know, as a personal chef and food preparer. Um, so Dan, thank you so much for coming on. Take it away. Tell us a little bit about you and, and, and how all this got started. Sure. Thanks so much for having me. Um, myself as a background, I started to cook when I was probably like seriously about five years old, like cooking with my mom and just you know, learning to do things in the kitchen. My mom was a stay-at-home mom, and she really set a passion for cooking for me and really set the foundation for um, my knowledge with what I do. I started to cook professionally at the age of 15, cooked through high school, cooked through college. Um, shortly after college, I got married, and my wife at the time was working during the week. I was working nights, weekends, and holidays because I was working in a hotel. And uh, did that for a while and then decided it was time for a career change. So I went into window sales, of all things, from being chef, go figure. But uh, it had the schedule that I wanted. And um, did that for about eight years from there with the economy and housing. Well, windows go hand in hand with all that. So it was like, I got to get out of this. I got to do what I want to do. My daughter was just born, and I wanted to be able to spend time with her. And when I was you know, in window sales, it was back to traveling all across the country. So. Um, I had done some research, looked into the personal chef industry, and thought it would be a cool option because really you work during the week, not like most chefs where you're working nights and weekends and holidays. So I thought it was kind of cool, but I really wasn't sure how it would all work. And uh, my sister at the time uh, had a cleaning business. She was cleaning houses for someone in Rumson, and, uh, New Jersey. And, um, you know, the person had, like, emergency knee surgery right before Thanksgiving. It was panicking, didn't know what she could do. So my sister just said, you know, my brother cooked professionally for years. Sure, would be happy to help you out, you know, if you take care of him. So I made, you know, this little menu up for her, threw it on Facebook. And then from there, other people started, you know, asking me to make food for him that knew me. And I made, like, seven Thanksgiving dinners, which was awesome. Yeah. But I was like, what about the rest of the year? You know, this is great for the day. So... Um, from there, I did deliveries all around the state and had everything packaged with the heating instructions. And the last stop was this lady in Rumson. And I opened the door, and as I opened the door with all these, you know, heating instructions and her groceries for uh, Thanksgiving with all the prepared foods, she jokingly hits me in the arm and goes, this is awesome. I should have you here every week. And I was like, why don't you? You know, and she was like, are you serious? So I was like, absolutely. So I put a business plan together, and three months later, I started Food by Dan. So... That's kind of the start of everything and kind of the foundation of where my business came from. But at that time, I was, you know, 60 to 70 pounds heavier than I am now. Um, was in some pretty bad shape and needed to do something. You know, I, I remember a, a certain day where I was running up a flight of stairs um, in the mall and I got to the top of the stairs and it was like not just winded, but like I was like, there's something wrong here. You know, I got I to do something. So. That day I decided to do something, and the next day I kind of did a serious, you know, probably wasn't the best choice to do, but I went into a juice fast and did it for 15 days, dropped some weight that way, and kind of cleaned myself up. And then from there, um, you know, I went into a paleo-style diet, and um, the weight just month after month just peeled off, making sure I was eating the right foods and making sure that those foods, you know, I wasn't sacrificing flavor, but at the same time, I was just coming up with different creative ways to make food that was easy and quick for me. There's, there's so many uh, ways that we can branch off of that story, but I think the first thing I got to commend you on, and, and I can relate to this, is that 
you just you have that that attitude of you know things opportunities were in front of you and no matter how scary they may have seemed you just you, you knew that's what you wanted you jumped at it and you did it and you know both the the personal chef as a as a business and way of making money for your life but also you know the weight loss thing is you know like you said you didn't wait around and and think and, and try to plan and sometimes there's something to be said for just you know forget inching into it just just dive and you know figure it out on the fly and i think that's really cool you know as someone who really struggled with weight for years you know just you know with what you're talking about from a personal standpoint i struggled with weight for years and it just added and added and added little by little every year it creeped up more and more and you know at that time it was like you know what i need to do this and i think that's something that a lot of people that are struggling with weight loss like i did for so many years you try all these different diets and all these things that are out there and none of it works because none of it's about lifestyle it's about we'll do this quick fix you know and it's not about a quick fix it's about changing your lifestyle and changing the way you eat and changing the way you think about food so much of it is psychological and mental can't even begin to you know, I don't want to get off on a different tangent there, but it's psycho psychology is so involved in all of this. People yeah. don't even realize, you know. Well, and that's why in the very beginning, I kind of jokingly said, as a nutrition guidance counselor, it is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there, there's a whole education aspect to it, but there, there's even more, like you said, related to the psychological, uh, the emotional, the mental side of it all. Um, one of the things that that I know in talking to you in the past. Um, you know, because you followed that paleo approach and you made, as you just said, the lifestyle changes, um, I know you don't count calories. And I know that that's something that a lot of people who have struggled to lose weight, um, you know, there's, I'm sure there's a lot of people listening. I'm sure that a lot of people listening, if it's not them directly, they know someone who has done the starvation type diet where you're working out six times a day or six times a week or, you know, tons of workouts and you're starving yourself, you're only eating 1,200 calories, and the weight loss, it's great for a while, but then it stops and you plateau. And sure. it, they're, not, they're not doing the nutrition side of it the right way. Um, so tell us a little bit about your approach, both when you lost all that weight and, and with your um, eat to lose kind of mentality sure. with, with the, the business. Sure. Um, personally, I personally don't count calories. You know, some people disagree with that. I just... For me, I focus more on knowing that the food I'm eating is clean, real, whole food. There's nothing processed. It's real, just clean food. And I eat till I'm full. And then from that point, I stop eating. And that's that's it. I focus on eating you know, a lot of cruciferous vegetables. I make sure the meats that I'm eating are lean, a lot of avocados, nuts, eggs, you know, good quality foods that have good fats. And those fats help keep you full long term, you know, over the hours with that. So you're not having that crash that you get so many times with all these other, you know, diets that are out there. Um, counting calories is just, for me, from a personal standpoint, it's it's like a, you're a slave to a machine. That's, that's what it's like. You know, so many people get so bent and frustrated, you know, because they're like, well, how many calories is this? How many calories is that? What's this? What's that? And it's like, just stop eating the crap. Like, don't eat the garbage. Eat real food and you're good. Like, throw the whole calorie thing out the window. I mean, that may sound kind of controversial to some folks, but you know, I just, I don't do it. I just make sure I'm eating clean, real food and it takes care of itself. And that, that's one of the reasons that I love having you on as, as a guest, because that's, that definitely fits in perfectly with our approach at House of Strength. When we talk about nutrition, first and foremost, the most important aspect of, of kind of that, that pyramid or hierarchy um, is the quality of the food that you eat. Second, we're going to look at the timing when you're eating certain nutrients, especially carbohydrates. Um, sure. You know, and those things far outweigh uh, the quantity or the calories. I mean, even when we talk quantity, we don't talk calories. We'll quantify in terms of you know the weight or the volume or grams. Yeah. At some point, you do have to quantify. I mean, if I just said, "Hey, Dan, yeah. go eat some eggs," you know, two eggs, two dozen <laughs> eggs. I mean, you got to know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but I think it's it's all within reason. It's all within moderation. You know, it, everyone's body's different. Every you know, everyone's diet is going to be slightly different depending on who they are. You know, but that's that's a really great point. And a lot of people, it and, and that's why I love what what we talked about in the beginning with with your attitude of you know screw it, I'm jumping in both feet, figure it out on the fly because so many people have that paralysis by over analysis where. 
You know, they've got to have the perfect plan. And what they don't realize is that there is no perfect plan, especially when it comes to nutrition, exercise. You've got to, you can't be afraid to try different things to experiment, figure out what works for you, what doesn't work for you. Um, whether it's a zero carb diet or whether you need to keep carbs in post-workout only. Um, there's so many different m variables that you can manipulate to dial it in just for you. But if you just start with that basic template of, you know, if man made it, I'm not going to eat it. Real foods, like you just said, everything you mentioned, everything that we always talk about at House of Strength. And from there, everything kind of... It, it just starts that snowball effect and then you can kind of tweak as you go along. But the most important thing I think is just to simply get started. Even, you know, to kind of piggyback on that, um, when you're talking about just getting started, like how people get so bent on, I have to do everything. You know, they try to do everything all at once and they get frustrated and overwhelmed and then they just, they quit. They give up on it. Um, you know, I did go gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free immediately, but I was like in the zone that it was like, I don't care what it is, I'm doing this, you know, and I was doing it for my daughter, you know, so I had a future with her. But, you know, I look at it as you don't have to do that all right away. Do one change a week and you'll see amazing results. Like start just drinking a gallon of water a day. Start with a gallon of water a day and then the next week, you know, cut out bread and then the next week cut out dairy, you know, do it gradually and you won't be overwhelmed with it. You know, that's something that just speaking from past, I would get overwhelmed with all that until I got to the point that it was just total frustration with the way I felt and looked that it was like, I'm doing it, nothing right. stopping. Right. But doing small changes, you know, little by little, you know, just do something. It doesn't have to be the perfect plan right away, but doing something is better than doing nothing. You yeah. know? That's, that's a really, really good piece of advice. Um, so, you know, with all that being said, I know the answer to this, but, you know, for, for Eat to Lose and for, for the food prep that you do for other people and, and for the, the personal chef side of it, you incorporate all of those values into the meals that you prepare for folks, correct? For the most part, yes. I mean, with food unless by they Dan, say I don't want to go that healthy. Exactly. With food by Dan, the personal chef service that's completely custom. Whatever someone wants, I make. It's specifically designed that you tell me what you want me to make, and that's exactly what I make and how I make it. Um, I do try to not push people, but I try to guide them towards that lifestyle. Just because most of the folks that I'm working with are saying, you know, we want to eat healthier. Um, with Eat to Lose Foods, they're working with me, again, on a custom level, same as Food by Dan, but they're working with me, and I kind of guide them through, um, you know, these are some things that may help you, you know, with, with your weight loss, and, you know, these are some things you may want to do, and kind of guide them through, you know, not necessarily, well, this is what I want to eat, but hey, this is what you should be eating, and this is kind of, we're going to set you up with a little plan to get you going and get you to meet your goals. Gotcha. Um and, and for you guys listening, um, we haven't even mentioned this yet, but but Dan is, is actually a little, he's, he's kind of a celebrity up in the New Jersey area. Um, <laughs> some of his personal chef clients include some of the NFL football players for the New York Giants. Um, we don't have to mention names, um, but Dan does cook uh, individually for some of those guys. What are some of the obstacles that you help those guys overcome? Sure. Um, with a lot of them, it's working direct with um, the dietitians. And uh, for the most part, they're doing macro diets where it's, you know, X amount of protein, X amount of carbs, X amount of fat per day. And, um, you know, a lot of them are trying to gain weight, trying to gain muscle so they can, you know, obviously tackle people and stay <laughs> humongous. So. Right. Um, that tends to be, you know, what it is mostly with them is making sure that I'm hitting their exact numbers so they're at optimal performance. And so, so let me get this straight: the the nutritionist or the dietitian for that professional football team has your trust, and she says, "Dan, this is what I want so and so to eat. Make it for him." That's correct. That's awesome. That's awesome. It's and, cool. and everybody else can have that same. We can have. We can all have the same personal chef as. New York Giants football players. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I cook for, you know, I, I cook for uh, film actors, I cook for Broadway producers, I cook for best-selling authors, some of the some of the Giants, I cook for one of the Kansas City Chiefs, Vikings, um, one of the Packers, and, so cool. you know, 
it's cool because it's like, yeah, I cook for high profile people, but at the same time, my most popular clients are the families, you know, or single people that they're just trying to get an edge, you know, they're just trying to get, you know, where they want to go, but it's across the board, you know, I just want to help people eat better, you know? Right. And I know uh, you mentioned enough calories or enough food for the football guys. I know they're, they're incredibly active, but I think that is one of the um, misconceptions when people think about the paleo uh, approach that the truth is it's actually, it's very easy to lose weight on that approach because a, when you're limiting the carbohydrates, insulin stays down. So it's easier to burn fat and B you are, it's, it's actually a lot harder to eat as many calories when you're not cramming junk down your throat because most of those foods are high far, high fiber, like the vegetables that you mentioned, um, mm -hmm. or they're very low in terms of caloric density, meaning that, you know, a salad takes up this much space, but it has far fewer calories than, you know, a candy bar that's this big and has three times the calories as the salad. Um, so touch on that a little bit, you know, people are actually able to eat more than they thought that they could, they can stay full, they can enjoy, you know, actually eating a lot and still get the benefits. Sure. My, my assistant um, in the kitchen that works with me, her name's Elsa, and she's, um, she's probably tell me she's watching this, but she's like in her mid-50s, you know, so she's struggling with some of, you know, the hormonal issues that, that women in that age range deal with, which can really hinder weight loss and really have them struggle. And she would you know, just kind of listen to, as we were cooking, she didn't eat a paleo type diet. Um, she ate, you know, your stereotypical Italian type food, lots of pastas, lots of cheese, all that stuff, um, which is good, but in moderation, obviously. Um, but you know, she kind of asked me about it, talked about it and she started going, you know, tweaking her diet and adjusting it and kind of, you know, asking me little things here and there. And it really helped her along. And you know, the, the reason, reason why I go and mention this is she's lost like 12 pounds in a month and she doesn't, you know, she doesn't exercise. She's just, she's getting into it now, you know, but it pretty much has been on food, lost 12 pounds in a month. And she says, the re again, the reason why I come back to it, I've never eaten so much food in my life and lost weight at the same time. You yeah. know, that's what it is. It's because she's eating clean, real food. You know, yeah. it's not, you know, when, when you eat a you know, when you're a little five foot tall woman, you eat a zucchini and a chicken breast, you're, you're good, you're set, you know, but it's like, you know, she's full where, you know, for whatever that is, the exchange, like you said, a candy bar is going to take up a similar amount of calories. And what are you getting out of that? You're not getting any nutrition. You're, you're right. starving yourself by eating that stuff. Yeah. That, that's so, that's so cool. Tell her congratulations and, you know, to, to keep going. Um, Absolutely. But, you know, it, it's funny when, when that happens, when people start providing their bodies the nutrients that, that our bodies need to function, just things just click and they start going. Um, and, and proof of that is, you know, like you said, she's really not even exercising. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, we're not going to, you know, call you out, but correct me if I'm wrong, exercise wasn't a huge part of your, that for at least for the first 11 months. For the first 11 months, I had zero exercise. It was and all you still lost 60 pounds, all because I mean, nutrition and diet is that important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's really cool. Really cool. Um, all right. So let's get into some food stuff. Um, yep. Dan and I have, have talked bef before we got going on this. He's got a couple of really cool tips for everybody. Um, let's start with starch substitutes because I know we've, we've touched on this a little bit with that typical paleo approach. It is going to be a little bit lower carbohydrate. We talked about cutting out breads. Um, you know, for, for certain people, we want to keep carbohydrates in after workouts. There's a lot of different ways we can tweak that. But within that kind of paleo umbrella, I know that you use a lot of starch substitutes. So give us an idea of, you know, I want some French fries or a potato, but let's do it without a potato. Sure. Um... I'm a meat and potatoes kind of guy. You know what I mean? That's that's what I am. Like when I go for food, that's what I go for is like the stick to your ribs, comfort type food. That's my thing. And when I started with the weight loss journey, it was like I'm not giving that up. Like I'll find ways around it, but I'm not giving that up. I don't right. care. I like crazy. There's, there's a thing. lot of people out there that share that same thought process. Exactly. So trying to figure out what I could use in place of potatoes that were like a staple for me. Um, 
great alternatives to potatoes. You know, sweet potatoes, obviously, uh, butternut squash. You know, any type of root vegetable is really a good option. Um, that you know, you may look at. Well, for a recipe, a sweet potato is not really going to taste great if I'm doing you know a certain type of stew or something like that. One of my favorite go-to vegetables that's a replacement for a potato which has basically the same exact texture like most folks don't even know if they have it in there they think it's a potato is a rutabaga it's like an awesome trade-off for a potato a rutabaga it has the same texture you can put it in a stew you can roast it and people will think it's a roasted potato same exact texture similar flavor all that but it's you know a low carb alternative to so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna swap out my face and become somebody who's a listener right now. What the hell is a rutabaga, and what's it look like, and where do I find it? Sure, a rutabaga is uh, a type of turnip. They'll call them wax turnips, and they're probably about the size of a softball, maybe a little bit larger. Um, you can find them in with like acorn squash and butternut squash. They're in that area, and they're covered in wax. You just peel off the wax, and then the you know use the the flesh on the inside there. Um, Another great alternative would be plantains. Um, they're an awesome trade out for a potato. They'll give you that texture. Um, also parsnips. Parsnips are a great option. Uh, if you've never had a parsnip, it looks just like a carrot, but it's white. It tastes similar to a carrot, not as sweet, but it's awesome to match. And um, it's a cruciferous vegetable for the last one, but cauliflower um, is a great option. If you like mashed potatoes, mashed cauliflower. It's like don't even know the difference. Um, top shepherd's pie with it, thicken sauces with it. Cauliflower is like the best vegetable you can have in your arsenal if you're in the kitchen and you're trying to lose weight because you can yep. do so many things with it. We're, we're going to run with that one. We're going to go into a couple of ideas with cauliflower. But um, one of, as, as you were talking, I just, uh, I actually have a book at my feet that I keep at my desk. So I'm going to hold this up so everybody can see it. This is one of my favorite books, and Dan, if you don't have this, I'm actually going to send it to you as a thank you for being on the podcast. This awesome. is The 150 Healthiest Foods on Earth, and it's written by Johnny Bowden. I've had this since I was in college, and it's so cool. It's, it's a resource, um, and so as you're naming off parsnips and rutabagas and you know whatever, you can turn and open it up. So I just found cauliflower really quickly, and it tells you all the benefits and, and positives of you know those foods that make the list of 150 healthiest so it's not every food so obviously if it's not in here then it's you know not in the 150 healthiest foods and you know the more you eat of these the more you include in these of these in your diet the better off you're going to be um and i can just tell you that this follows a paleo approach very very closely um, but tremendous resource, lots of, it's actually fun to read if you're into health and food and, you know, kind of a nerd like me and Dan. So, um, that's not an insult, Dan. <laughs> do you, do you have this book? I don't, I don't. I'm, send, I'm awesome. sending it to you. I'm sending it to Thank you. you. Um, but, um, you know, so, so for example, if, if you look up cauliflower, it talks about, you know, the, the mineral content, the vitamin content, how it's low in calories, it's got a lot of fiber, all the reasons that it makes that list of 150 healthiest foods. Um, so now, you know, you could look through that book and you could say, all right, well, I know I want to use more of that or eat more of that. And a lot of people may come to, you know, that may be the roadblock where, all right, I know I want to use cauliflower. So Dan, let's give them a couple of ways to do it. I know that when I got really excited when you sent me, you know, kind of your thoughts, um, for, for this podcast because I use cauliflower a lot of different ways. Um, I will make kind of like a fried rice dish where you put it in the blender, um, blend it into kind of a rice consistency, and then I'll cook it with eggs and butter in the skillet um, and have you know an awesome side dish with my meat or whatever protein. Um, you can make it into a crust for paleo pizzas. Um, what, are, what are some other things that you do with it? Sure. Um... You know, I always go back to, I try to mix it up all the time with whatever I'm cooking, whether it's cauliflower or any type of vegetable where, you know, I'll grill vegetables, I'll saute them. I do a technique that, I, you know, I don't know what the technical term would be for it, but it's kind of like a steam saute where I'll start to saute something and then I'll add some, you know, chicken broth, vegetable broth in it and then steam it from there to really retain a lot of the flavors and keep it nice and fresh and cook it quickly, you know, that you can make something real fast. 
Um, but for cauliflower specifically, I like to, you know, as you mentioned, rice. Um, I use a food processor with a grating blade, throw it in there, and then you steam it for like two minutes, and it's just like rice. It doesn't necessarily taste like rice, but it has the same texture. And that's a huge part to eating that people don't necessarily think of. It's all about texture. You can eat healthy if you have those textures in there and you won't miss those other things. It's all about swapping and trading things out. And a lot of that goes back to what we talked about earlier with the psychological part of it is simply having something else on your plate. So it's not just, oh, I'm eating a chicken breast or, or a, you know, a grass-fed burger and it just, you know, you're used to seeing – you know, if you go to a restaurant, it's a hamburger on the bottom half, the bun's laid open, you got your fries, and it takes up the whole plate. You know, if you right. make that at home and you're following paleo and you don't have a bun, then you got a burger on yeah. some lettuce and nothing else. But, you know, if, if you make that, you know, if you if you did an entire head of cauliflower, it would take up more space than your plate can hold. So you can literally fill your plate and eat as much of that as you want, and you're not going to fall off track you're, you're going to stay on course with your goals and you know it, it, it you get the you get to feel full you get the the feeling of you know being full you get the psychological benefit of you know having more stuff on your plate so absolutely that's that's so, good stuff. so you can rice it um again how you mentioned like pizza crusts or flatbreads you can do all that with cauliflower you know you make it like rice like you would do or if you have leftover cauliflower rice you kind of wring it out, it dries it out, you mix it with some eggs, some almond flour, and you can make, you know, different flatbreads. So if you wanted to have a burger with some type of bread, that's a way to do it, you know, and still be in with what you're looking to do. A great thing to do as far as vegetables go is roasting. That's like my go-to because it really intensifies the flavor. It brings out a nuttiness. Um, and one of my favorite uh, dishes, one of my clients' favorite side dishes um, is roasted cauliflower puree, basically. Really simple, like just a little bit of olive oil, some garlic cloves, and some cauliflower. Throw it in an oven for like 425 for like 20 minutes, and then blend it up with some chicken broth in the blender, and it's amazing. That It takes on a whole different characteristic. People almost say it gives it almost a mushroom flavor. So cauliflower is very versatile, and when you roast vegetables, it brings out an entire different flavor. It tastes like a whole different vegetable. In addition to that, how you mentioned, you know, what's on the plate and how things are presented. If you cut things to different sizes or different dimensions, put things in, you know, where there's a julienne, the strip, or if you dice it or chop it, that makes it taste completely different. So mix it up, keep it yeah. different, and you won't get bored, and you'll stick to that diet because it's interesting. Yeah, it's like when, when we were kids and mom used to make a grilled cheese sandwich. Instead of cutting it straight, you go diagonal, and all of a sudden it's gourmet. Well, it's all about the diagonal, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like mowing the lawn, the diagonal cut, you know? <laughs> Um, well, and speaking of cauliflower, I know, and, and, you know, Dan actually came down to House of Strength. It, it's almost been, it's been a year and a half. Uh, it was in December of 2012, um, when he came down and, and did a tasting for us, um, and made some appetizers. And I'm, I believe that one of them was a version of a cauliflower hummus. Um, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to look that up the, the blog, we put a blog up on our website. It had the recipes um, and all the foods that you made. So that will be in the show notes. We'll put a link to that so you can see all the stuff that Dan made there. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm intrigued by this cauliflower flatbread. That's one that I have never done. So is it uh, is it possible for you to hook us up with a little recipe for that that we can put in the show notes? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome, awesome. So um, run us run that one by us one more time. What do we do? The cauliflower flatbread, you basically, you can take like your leftover cauliflower rice, or it's great with butternut squash, too. Um, you know, you take your vegetable and you, you have it kind of, that, it, that it's wrung out a little bit, that it's a little dry, like you would when you're doing like the pizza crust. And there's there's almond flour, some egg, and some, I'm not sure offhand what the other ingredients are in, in there without having the recipe in front of me. Baking is like, a, I have to have it all in front of me, otherwise I'm like, ah, I have no idea what's <laughs> Yeah, but the flatbread, I could definitely hook you up with, with the recipe for it and the, the techniques and processes. Really easy, really simple, and for sure, it's it's no issue at all. And that's a way that you have, you know, when you're having that, oh, I wish I had some type of bread, you know, it's a way to get that yeah. great out of the way. Yeah, that would be really cool. I know a lot of people would be interested in trying to make that. I know I'm one of them. So. Sure, sure. Um, all right, well, let's uh, 
let's let's keep going with some tips, but this this time in a different one. So now we'll kind of work our way backwards. Those are kind of tips for you know making meals in the kitchen with certain ingredients, but those ingredients have to get into your kitchen somehow. And uh, this is a quote that it, it's something that I like to say, and somebody just reminded me this week that I used to say it a lot more than I do now. But uh, you cannot eat what you don't have, um, and that works both positive and negative. So. On the positive side, for, for good food, you know, if you don't go to the store and stock up on the meats, the cauliflowers, the vegetables, the nuts, seeds, eggs, things we're talking about, it's going to be pretty hard to incorporate them into your diet. Um, on the bad food side of it, if you just stop bringing the garbage into your house, it's a lot harder to eat said garbage. <laughs> Um, so, you know, I always tell people if, if you're just transitioning into this and you're, you know, you're, you're fighting really difficult battles in the grocery store, go to the grocery store right after a workout. Um, you're going to be a lot less likely to buy things that in your mind will ruin what you just worked so hard for. Um, you know, if your schedule can allow you to set things up that way, don't go grocery shopping when you're tired or when you're hungry. Um, you know, go when you are highly motivated to be fit, healthy, successful, whatever. Um, so, so just being in the right mental frame of mind when you go to the grocery store is a great uh, way to get that started. Um, when you're there, you want to shop around the perimeter. Um, and I know, Dan, that's a tip that, that you talk to people a lot about. So why do they want to do that? Sure. Um, well, around the perimeter, but also just to kind of piggyback what you're saying, you know, you tell them to go after a workout. I tell people don't go to the grocery store unless you've eaten before you go. Because just, you know, speaking from past, I'd go in the grocery store and I didn't eat anything and I'd be hung hungry while I'm in there. And it's like you're looking around and it's like, oh, that looks good. This looks good. And before you know it, you're like, your cart's full of garbage, you know. So right. eating, working out, doing whatever you have to do to make sure you're not, you know, hungry and thinking about food um, while you're grocery shopping is a great option. Um, the perimeter is the way to go. Um, all the fresh, real food is around the perimeter. Put all the stale garbage that's not food. It's not food <laughs> in right. the center of the store. Like, you know, people often say to me, oh, I, I eat cereal for breakfast every morning. And I'm like, stop it. Why? You know, it's like that's the worst aisle you can go down. It's, <laughs> it's like cardboard. It's not real food. It's just processed garbage and sugar and you're hungry 20 minutes after you eat it, you know, eat some eggs for breakfast, eat something good, substantial, healthy and whole. And that's the way to go. But the perimeter of the grocery store, that's where the vegetables are. The perimeter of the grocery store, that's where the meat is, the eggs are, you know, real food that's as close to the farm. I'm not like a tree hugger or anything, but you got to get back to the farm. That's what you have to think about it. If yeah. it looks like it came off a truck off the farm, eat it. If it looks like it came out of a box and there's a tiger on it or something like that, stay away from it. It's that simple. Like it's right. not right. rocket science. If, right. if there's a ca cartoon character, don't give it to yourself. Don't give it to your kids. Give them the thing that looks like it came from a farm. So I know. Um, let me let me stop you right there because you just you mentioned kids. I know you have a young daughter, and I do. with with your approach to eating, I mean, do you follow the same kind of you know, where do you draw the line with, with what you allow her to have? I mean, you don't have to get into your entire philosophy on parenting, but, you know, within the scope of nutrition, how do you balance kind of making her happy and doing what's right for her? Sure. I mean, I'll let her have something here and there. You know what I mean? Like if we're out and she wants a snack or a piece of candy. Or She's something not like hardcore that. paleo yet. She's not hardcore paleo yet. But I do have a picture on my Facebook page where she ate some uh, braised Mexican lettuce folks. That was kind of cool. But for the most part, she eats what I eat. And that's, that's it. You know, I mean, when I grew up, I didn't get the choice of, well, you can eat this or you can eat what our family eats. I ate what my family ate. And that's the same philosophy that I bring to Pearl. Right. Um, I seeing my journey and seeing where I came from. I don't want her to have to go through that, you know? So the chicken nuggets that are mechanically separated meat, that's not going in my house. That's not going in my fridge. No way, no how, because I don't want her eating that stuff. I mean, once in a while, if we're out and she wants a hamburger or something like that, or we're at Chuck E. Cheese and we have to eat Chuck E. Cheese pizza because it's two and a half year old. Sometimes you just got to well, go down and 
But do again, it. that's that's the exception. That's not but the that's norm. the exception. On a daily basis, she's eating fruits, vegetables. She loves almonds. That's like her thing. She'll run around the house with a handful of almonds. Like she eats real whole food, drinks water, drinks almond milk, and that's her deal. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, food prep tips. This this is something that is another huge, huge, I guess, overlooked and, and underestimated uh, area of being successful on any, I don't want to call it diet journey or, or just, but if you're going to eat healthy, if that's going to be your lifestyle, food prep is going to become a habit. It has to, because unfortunately, um, it's very hard to just walk around and bump into healthy food. Um, I know that that's more the case for, for us here in Virginia than it is for, for Dan where you are in New Jersey. Um, you know, when I used to live in New York City, I used to love the fact that every corner had a health food store. Or, you know, uh, it's a much more health conscious area. So depending on where you live, that statement is more or less true for you. But it, the bottom line is food prep has to become a habit um, if you're going to continue this healthy lifestyle. Uh, Give us a couple of tips that, that you use. Sure. Um, you know, from a psychological standpoint, if you have good food in the fridge and you don't have to go out, you know, even as you mentioned, well, in New York, you know, it's on every corner. If you're someone that struggles with weight loss and that's in your head, when you're going out and you're walking corner to corner, just saying from my previous experience, and it's like there's a burrito over there or there's a salad over there, it's kind of like, it's pretty easy to be like, eh, I think I'll go for the burrito, you know? So it's like, if you have that food ready-made and it's in your house, it makes it so much easier. Um, when I cook for clients, I mean, again, now my business is kind of tailored more towards the fitness realm. That's kind of what I do. That's what people come to me for. But before it was, you know, when I first started out, I was making food for anyone. So it was making everything across the board healthy or not healthy. And as a chef, you have to taste that food. So that made it very difficult. So a way that I got around with it was always making sure that I had food prepared and ready to go. That when I got home from work, I didn't have to make dinner because it was there and it was ready. I did everything ahead of time and had it packaged and ready to go that I would just grab in the fridge and have it to know that I was sticking with it. Because if it wasn't there, you know how you said, if it's not there, what are you going to do? You know, it's that double edged sword. So, um, I made sure that I always had stuff prepared. If I was on the road, you know, I'd go for some almonds, some hard boiled eggs, you know, if I didn't have a chance to, you know, bring food with me and some fruit, you know, and that was kind of my go-to meal replacement while I was on the road. Right, but, right. um, as far as other, um, ways to cook, you know, use different techniques. You know, you can cook up to eight different meals at a time with your stove. If you put two cookie sheets on the bottom rack, two cookie sheets on the top rack, and then you have four burners, you can make eight different meals at one time. So it sounds overwhelming. It really does, but it's not. The whole key to that is prepping everything first. So you've got everything up. You have everything ready to go. So then when you go to do everything, you just throw it all in the pan, throw it on the baking sheet, turn it all on, let it go. And you can make, you know, a week's worth of meals in probably less than two hours if you yeah. really push and get good at what you're doing. You know, a lot of it has to do with technique and speed, but – you know, for the most part, you can make a week's worth of meals in about two hours if you use the, you know, if you roast some things, if you steam some things, you know, grill something, you know, then you have nine different options if you throw something on the grill. So yeah, and that's that, that's an incredibly efficient use of your time, and that's one of the things that, that we always coach people on with um, with the nutrition side of it is, you know, so for example, Sunday is generally a day where a lot of people can do their grocery shopping. So whatever day you have where you can dedicate two or three hours, take an hour or two and go do all your shopping, acquire all the food that you'll need at least for the next, for the first half of the week. Um, but preferably for the whole week so that you don't have to do it during the middle of the week. And then you can pick two days during the week and cook. So maybe Sunday and halfway through the week, Wednesday, you cook again. And on Sunday, like Dan said, I know what I used to do and, and still do is, you know, on the grill, you throw all your proteins on the grill. You put hard-boiled eggs on the stovetop. You've got rice on the other eye. You've got potatoes or any other vegetables in the actual oven. So exactly like what Dan's saying there, and I think, you know, Dan's throwing out eight or nine. I think 
for, for a qualified professional like you, that that's that's a piece sure, of cake. Sure. But I know a lot of people. I'm I'm like wow. I, I can just see you like it's like a cartoon where you're trying to juggle all these pies and they go flying. Sure, 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 sure. Um, I mean, even if you did four at yeah, a time, start, no, that's start not small. Hard. Exactly. Start small and as you get comfortable, add something else in. You know. Yeah. But but kind of plan out your week and and say okay, I'm going to eat. So let's say Monday, you know, here's what I'm going to eat. Tuesday, here's what I'm going to eat. Wednesday, here's what I'm going to eat. Well. You can't have you can't eat it if you don't have it. So you you plan out what you're going to eat for the week. Then you go to the grocery store. You acquire all that stuff. Come home, cook it all, and you know do it just like we just mentioned. And then it's in your refrigerator. So when you come home every night, it only takes 10, 15 minutes to get it together for the next morning. Or if you want to do it in the morning as part of your morning routine, you do that. You grab it. You're out the door and you're gone. Um, you know. I understand what it's like to not want to do that. I know it's hard for people to believe, but the last thing I want to do at night is cook my meals for the next day or, or do any of that stuff. But I know if I don't do it, then I know I got to eat tomorrow. So I'm going to eat, I'm going to have to do something. And if I, you know, get out of what I'm normally eating, then, you know, I'm going to, I'm not going to feel as good. My mind's not going to function as well. And it's going to affect, you know, my performance in the gym as a coach my ability to help other people to concentrate on on you know whatever's going on so it's a very important thing and it all starts with with that developing that habit of you know prepping your food and being prepared even as you mentioned with knowing what meals the meal planning is crucial that's something that I forgot to mention you know when you go to the grocery store people always overbuy you know they they're always buying things that they shouldn't buy because they don't go to the grocery store with a list or a plan of this is what I'm going to have this week. That's something that's really, you know, as far as grocery shopping goes, go with a list. So you're not buying things that you're not supposed to buy. Buy what's on that list and get out of there. That's mm -hmm. that's the a good rule of thumb, you know? That's, yeah, that's great. I, I didn't even, I guess that's just something, I'm such a list making person. That's just how my mind works. That I didn't even realize that 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 was something I was doing right. So that's cool to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, seriously, a yeah. lot of folks, it's like they'll go to the grocery store of, oh, what, what are we going to get for the week? You know, and it's like, I don't know, this looks good or that looks good. And that's okay to do sometimes. You know, if you're on track and you're, you're good with it, you know, hey, go for it. Do whatever you're going to do. But if you're just starting out, again, speaking from experience as someone that struggled with it for years, if I tried to buy healthy food and I was in there, and I was hungry, and I was in the store, and I didn't plan out what I was going to eat for the week, well, things would magically find their way into the cart somehow, and then come home, and it would be like, oh, how did these Twinkies get here, <laughs> you know? So it's like, you get a, get rid of that stuff. Don't even have it on your list, so you don't even go down that aisle. It's a, a great way to go. Make sure you have a real organized list, and plan out your meals for the week, and the more you plan your meals out, the easier it gets, and the quicker you get yeah. it, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and this, this, you, people will make fun of me for this one, but I'm, I'm so kind of OCD with some of these things that I even write my list in the path that I go through the grocery store. So like the first things on my list are the first things you see when you go in and <laughs> good, man. Yeah. Good. Um, but, um, all right. So we're kind of coming up on the end of this. Um, I, I want to, I want people to know, Dan, where they can find you and, if somebody wanted to, you know, contact you about being a personal chef, you know, because I think that's just so cool because you can, you, all the barriers that we mentioned, you know, don't know what meals I'm going to eat. I don't have time to prepare them. I don't want to go to the grocery store. Um, you know, Dan will deliver pre-made perfect meals to your doorstep. Um, how do people find you? How can they sign up for that? And, and what exactly is that process? Sure. Um, they can check me out at foodbydan.com or eattoloosefoods.com. Um, quickest way to reach me would be via email, dan at foodbydan.com. And um, we deliver in New Jersey. Uh, we sh ship nationally. So if you wanted food wherever you are in the United States, we can get it to you within, you know, two days of making that food. Um, and if someone wants to work with me, the process, basically we go through a small interview. We determine what the person's goals are, their taste, their palate allergies, you know, any other type of diet considerations. And we put together a custom tailored program specific to them, to their taste, palate, diet, and so on. And then from there, we just roll it out, depending on if it's just for them, for their family, if it's a supplemental, you know, meal plan, or if it's a full meal plan replacement. So, yeah. um, so food if, you do, 
people do yeah. have the option of, you know, if I want, you know, one, you know, one meal a day, or if I want five dinners or three dinners for the week, or just all my lunches. Exactly. We work with folks where it's like breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, and so on. Folks that are really looking to dive into weight loss and they're really serious about doing it. That tends to be what's most popular where that's, you know, they're going to eat my food for you know, a couple months and that's what they're going to do. Um, but what tends to be the most popular is that people are looking for those couple nights a week that it's like, you know, their kids are out at soccer, they work the long shift, and it's like they get home and they don't have anything because they forgot to plan. They can grab one and know they have a healthy choice ready to go for them. So it's 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 almost like if you took all the positives or the benefits of like the Nutrisystem commercials that you see, but then you swap out their mass-produced cardboard food for great tasting, perfect, healthy meals, that's Dan. That's it, man. That's awesome. <laughs> and just to clarify, it's it's shipped frozen. When we ship, it's it's flash frozen and it's in vacuum sealed bags. All you do is take the vacuum sealed bag and put it in simmering water for like five minutes and dinner's done. So there's no microwave or any of that stuff. It's real quality made food. If you can simmer water for five minutes, you're good to go. You can boil water. You can have a great dinner. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, Dan, we really appreciate you coming on. Um, before we let you go, two tips from you. One is on topic. So related to food prep, shopping, nutrition stuff, um, and then one off topic, uh, you know, the, the single most important piece of advice that you want people to leave here with so that they can be stronger, happier, healthier, kick more ass. Sure. Um, on topic, I would say a great tip would be invest in a probe thermometer. They're electronic. They're about, I would say, 15 bucks at like Bed Bath & Beyond. And you'll cook your meat perfect every time that way. You know, you can go by the guides, but, you know, so many times people are like, oh, when I cook healthy, it doesn't taste good or it doesn't, you know, because they're overcooking like their chicken. Cook it to 165 degrees. It's perfect. You know, work, you can cook to medium. And when you have that probe thermometer, it takes all the guesswork out of it. You don't need to do, like, the, the poking check that you see so much to tell if it's done or any of that. You know, you can just have that, and you look like a pro. Because you know it's perfect every single time if you have that. So a thermometer is a great investment, especially if you're doing a bunch of things all at once and you're, like, not totally paying attention to every single dish if you're trying to go for the eight or nine at a time like I do. It's, uh, it's a great option and it's a great tool to have. So, you know, as far as kitchen gadgets and stuff like that go, that's really going to help, you know, improve your meals so pro thermometer great investment that is awesome that is awesome you, you did your homework you were prepared for the question <laughs> taylor taylor is a good brand too that's an awesome brand pro thermometer that's the one i use taylor mm -hmm. all right all right so part two off topic part two i would say you need to get past the psychology of all of it you need to look at it's it's so much you know it's about nutrition it's about the food but at least for me, it's more about mindset. It's making sure you're in the zone and making sure that it's hell or high water. I am doing this, period. You know, you're good enough to do it. And you just have to believe in yourself and have the confidence in yourself to look in the mirror and look at yourself and say, you know what? This is not going to be me. And I know what I'm capable of and I know what I can do. And when you have that mindset, you'll meet your goals. You'll lose the weight and you'll get it done and you'll be proud of yourself at the end of it you know it's a journey it's not perfect everybody falls down you know i tripped up i've been going through some stuff the past couple months and i've been busy and you know sometimes my nutrition slips up a little bit that's what happens you know but you get back on the horse and you try again and you just keep going it's all about the journey you know and if you slip up you just have to say you shake it off and start over again the next day and keep yourself on track and look at it that who are you doing it for? You know, are you doing it for yourself? Are you doing it for your family? You need to do whatever you need to do to make sure that you're around as long as possible to take care of the people that are important to you. So have that mindset in there of take them down, you know, and, and you'll do it and you'll get there. That's beautiful. Thank you for that, Dan. That's Thanks awesome. for having me, man. This is great. Uh, I, I wish we were in person so I could give you a bro hug for that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's it, everybody. Thank you for listening. Make sure that you subscribe to the House of Strength podcast on iTunes so that you don't miss a single episode. And check out the House of Strength 
jim.com website to see the blog version of this so you get all the show notes, the links, the recipes that Dan's going to hook us up with. Um, we'll have some links to that tailored probe thermometer, um, links to Dan's website. All that stuff will be on, the, on our website, the blog version of this, so check that out. And we will see you next time. Thanks for listening.